So say you have a great idea for a book and you've done your research to see if your idea is viable and now you have to actually sit down and write the book. Where do you start? Are you a discovery writer who likes to make it up as you go along until something clicks? Or do you want to follow a structure? Which structure will best suit your writing style and the type of book you're writing? Of course, there's no right way and different writers do it differently. So don't box yourself in with a formula, but also don't find out after writing hundreds of pages that your story is not going to work or if you're writing non-fiction that you don't have enough material to fill a whole book. And then there's characters. You often need a bunch of them and they need to be well thought out and have character traits that are going to play off each other. In the non-fiction world, you'll need a character sketch of your ideal reader so that you know what to write for them. The answer is document templates, which are these templates that are added when you open a Scrivener fiction template, and I've created a bunch of them for you. Hi, this is Kaz from the Scrivener Quick Start channel, where I help you write your books and organize your writing projects in Scrivener. And in this training, I'm going to share a Scrivener project template, which you upload to your project templates window, packed full of all my document templates, which give practical advice on how to construct a story that works. If you want to follow along, pop over to the templates page on my website, link in the description below. There's a quick video at the top of the page explaining how to upload a template to Scrivener. Download the document templates template and upload it to your Scrivener app. Now, crucially, in Scrivener, project templates come preloaded with all the most suitable compile and formatting settings for the type of document you plan to export. Novel layout for a novel, screenplay layout for a screenplay. So first, you need to open a new working document using the most suitable template for the type of project you want to write. Then open the document templates template as a secondary project. Now, either scan through the document templates to see what you find most useful and drag them across into your existing template sheets folder. Or if your working project template did not include a templates folder, you can drag the whole templates folder across. But then you need to set this folder to be the one Scrivener chooses when you want to open a new document from a template. Go to Project, Project Settings, Special Folders. Open the drop down menu and choose Templates. Notice that the special templates icon is now attached to the new templates folder. You could open the original template sheets folder and move its files into the new templates folder, but we don't need them, so I'll move the whole folder to the trash. And let's go and have a closer look at the new templates folder. First, choose non-fiction or fiction. Don't be overwhelmed by all the templates. You can always delete any you don't need. Expand the binder so that you can see the full template titles. If you're writing non-fiction, you're going to need a template to enter all your avatar information so that you know exactly who you're writing your book for. If you're writing fiction, you need a template for each of your characters and another for all of your settings. In all instances, I've created a sheet explaining all the things you might want to record, as well as a blank sheet where you can fill in your own details. So say you want a new character. Select the character folder. If your template came without one, create one, right click on it and assign a character icon to it. Right click and choose add new from template or go to project new from template and follow the path to the sheet. Name your file. Now split your screen in two. On Mac hold down option to switch the split to horizontal. Place your cursor inside the second split. Open your templates folder, find the matching template with the explanation and open it in the second screen. 
Using the prompts from the prompt sheet, fill in everything you can think of for this character. When you're done, select either screen to go back to one screen. For fiction, I've included a brief explanation for plot archetypes and character archetypes so that you have a basic idea of the kind of characters and plots you can choose, but feel free to add your own based on your research. The next set of templates are roadmaps. For each one, I've created an infographic so that you can see what it's about at a glance. I write mostly non-fiction, and this is the actual roadmap that I use. In fiction, all stories consist of a few common structural elements found universally in myths, fairy tales, dreams and movies. They are known collectively as the hero's journey. For those, I've included the roadmap I use, as well as some popular roadmaps used by other fiction writers. I've color-coded them, again, so that you can see their basic structure at a glance. Notice that these top three follow a similar pattern of being in the ordinary world, transitioning to a different world, and then coming back again. Then, Save the Cat does a similar thing but adds time frames to the beats, and all of them have three acts. Then the Snowflake method approaches writing in a different way, where you start your plot, expand it a bit, create your characters, then expand your plot a bit more, develop your characters a bit more, and so on until you have an overview that you can view in one long list or put inside a spreadsheet. Another thing that you can do right inside Scrivener in Outliner mode, and I'll show you how to do that shortly. For each roadmap, I've created a template with the instructions and a blank template where you can fill in your own information. But note that each method is based upon extensive research, which is backed up by a book. So once you've identified the roadmap that best suits your own purpose or the needs of your particular genre, you can find a link to the original book and study it for yourself so that you have a full understanding of each step in the process. If you're interested in the Snowflake method, I've made you a handy Snowflake spreadsheet template to get you started, but it will require a bit of setup from you. Switch to your Outliner view. The title and synopsis have already been included by the novel template. Edit the label for each character's point of view as you build your characters. To do this, open any label in the Label column and click on Edit. Click on the plus button and create a label for each character. Now when you open the label drop down menu, you can assign a character point of view to each scene. Open the column drop down menu and uncheck any columns that are not useful for this task. Then, for the snowflake method, and this is generally good advice for any writing, you want to add a bit of conflict to every scene and a disaster or a conundrum at the end of each scene. So click on Custom Columns. Make sure this Type drop-down menu is set to Text so that you can write in your new columns. Click on the plus symbol and add a column for Conflict and another for Disaster. Place a check inside your new columns in the column drop-down menu. Now jot down ideas you have for conflict and or disaster that you can think of to move the story along in each scene. Add more columns for anything else you want to track for this particular project. And that's it for this template. I hope you'll get a lot of use out of it no matter which writing method you decide to go for. The next video is going to be about a quick and easy way to find categories if you don't already know what you want to write about or which genre to go for. And for finding the best category to put your book in after you've written it that gives it the best chance to be found online. Thanks for watching this video and I'll see you in the next video.